The king Parishit requested Sukadev, O preacher, so far you have related about the way how to overcome attachment for worldly things. Inadvertently, the living beings have committed some kinds of sins or crimes. O great soul, now kindly tell me the way by which humans can get rid themselves of the torture they are supposed to be subjected to in the hells. Sukadev said, A sinner is sure to be tortured in hell, unless and until he had observed penance for his sins in his present birth. But even penance is no guarantee of his salvation if the person indulges again in sins thereafter. It is all because of ignorance that desires to commit sin does not end. Spiritual ways are thereafter necessary. Adapting spiritual ways like penance, celibacy, tranquility, self-restraint, abdication, truthfulness, holiness, restrainment of passions and discipline, even the most serious sins are destroyed. Alternatively, taking refuge at the God or developing a devotion for Him, all the sins can be destroyed. O Parikshit, such a sanctification of the sinner as achieved by dedication to God is rare even by observing penance. Sukadev narrated the tale that was once related by Muni Agasya. In the town of Kanuj lived a Brahmin named Ajamil. He had married to his mistress. Being with an unchaste woman, his Brahminical virtues had been destroyed. Now Ajmal earned his living not by performing holy tasks, but instead of he restored to petty tricks like plundering, deceiving and even killing people to feed his family. Once a group of Mahatmas came to the town. People greeted and offered them with edible items, but the ascetics refused to accept anything. They said that they would accept the food only from the household where holy food is cooked for the Lord. Irritated people showed the ascetics the way to Ajamil's home. From Ajamil, the ascetics accepted the arms and themselves cooked the food and offered it to God and ate themselves. Now the heart of Ajamil and his wife were filled with a expiation. The ascetics wished to cause some benefit to Ajamil. They said to him, If you get a son now, please name him Narayana. Ascetic's words did materialize and Ajamil got one more son, the tenth one. As per Ascetic's advice, Ajamil named him Narayana. Being the youngest son, Narayana was very dear to Ajamil. He used to remember Narayana always. Everything was passing as usual when the time of Ajamil's departure arrived suddenly one day. Yamadutas, agents of Yama, the god of death, began to take him for his last journey. Not seeing his youngest son Narayana before him, Ajamil began to call out loudly, Narayana, Narayana. Hearing the calls house of Lord Vishnu, two arrived there and challenged Yamadutas. The frightened Yamaduta said, We are the servants of Dharmarat. Why are you stopping us? Servers of Lord Vishnu said, if you are the servants of Dharmaraj, define dharma, religion then. Yamadutta said, action dictated by Vedas are dharma, religion in true sense. And the actions forbidden by Vedas are a dharma. And Veda is Narayana himself. The server said, you are unaware of Paramadharma, supreme religion. This sinner has called out the name of Narayana, God. So his sins from the past crores of birth have been washed away. Now he is no more a sinner. Wise men say that recitation of God's name by any means as a name of someone else in derision or derogation automatically does away with all the sins. 
this is the bounty of god's name that a mere remembrance of it whether wittingly or unwittingly does destroy all sins hearing this dialogue ajmal awakened as if from a long slumber yamadutas had returned to yamloka by then but the abject sinner ajmal had recovered from the snare of death without losing a moment ajmal went to the banks of the ganges they drinking the holy water of the ganges he left his body and went and found a place in vaikuntha loka the abode of lord vishnu dialogue of yama and yamadutta sukhadev says parikshit when the servers of lord vishnu failed the attempt of yamadutas they returned to yamaloka and complained to yama about the event o yamadev we had so far known that you are the sole authority of punishing the people as per their deeds nobody had dared so far to violate your rule but today those four servers of lord vishnu openly caused violation of your dictate yamaraja silently prayed lord vishnu and said lord narayana is the lord of all living things he is the lord of me also and i myself keep an account of the sins and pious deeds of the living being by his order only all the gods dikpalas shiva and brahma all of them follow his dictates the greatest duty of all the living beings is that they should achieve a dedicated devotion for the lord sons just look at the bounty of lord that even the sinner like ajamel escaped the news of death simply by calling out the names of the god just once so from now on you are never go near those people who are reciting lord's name or are his devotees bring only the sinners to me but the daksha from pracheta shukadeva said ten sons of the king prachi nabhari were known as prachetas they observed severe penance under the sea when they emerged chandra and calmed them and presented a beautiful daughter of the apsara pralokcha to them as their wife from her prachetas begot prachetas daksha in due course the subject of daksha spread all over the world and populated far off places daksha created first of all all the gods the demons and the human beings who inhabited the heaven the earth and the waters respectively but daksha was not still satisfied he therefore went to vindhyachal and started a severe penance there pleased by his penance god appeared before him by the permission of god daksha prajapati married with ashniki the daughter of panchama prajapati from ashniki daksha got 10000 sons named haryashwa in due course daksha asked his sons to reproduce but instead of reproducing they all reached narayana sarovar on the banks of the river sindhu to a place of pilgrimage beguiled by the preaching of narada about bhagavat dharma daksha again produced 1000 sons named shalvashwa and asked them to reproduce but they to follow the footsteps of their elder brothers and took no interest in worldly affairs narada preached them also about bhagavat dharma when daksha came to realize that narada has converted his sons into ascetics by his preaching he angrily calls narada to be a wanderer forever with nowhere a place to stay on narada accepted daksha's curse and blessed him with a boon to have 60 daughters for the continuation of his subject by the virtue of boon 60 daughters were born in the home of daksha in due course when they grew up daksha got 10 of them married to dharma then 10 to kashyapa 27 to chandrama 2 to angira and krishna shiva each and remaining four daughters were married to a kashyapa named 
Tarakshyam. The entire world came to be populated by the offsprings of these sixty daughters of Daksha. Shukadeva said, Parikshit, the names of Dharma's ten wives were Bhanu, Lambhag, Kaukabhi, Jami, Vishwa, Dakshyam, Maruvat, Vasu, Muhurta, Sankalpa. Daksha's daughters Swarupa and Bhuta were the wives of Bhut. Swarup, Swarupa begot uncountable Rudraganas, eleven of them are prominent. Bhuta's second wife, Bhuta, gave birth to formidable spooks and ganas like a Vinayaka, etc. Angira's first wife, Swadha, gave birth to Pitraganas, while his second wife, Sati, accepted a Veda Atharva Nigra as her son. Krishna's wife, Archi, because Dhumrakesh, while Dikshana, Krishwa, second wife, gave birth to four sons, Vedishra, Deval, Vayun, and Manu. Kashyapa, named Taraksha, had four wives, Vinata, Kadru, Patangi, and Yamani. Birds were born to Patangi, while Yamani gave birth to moths. Vinita's son is Garuda, who is the vehicle of Lord Vishnu. Arun was her second son who became the charioteer of Surya. Nagas were, the bo- were born to Kadru. Twenty-seven daughters of Daksha were married to Chandrama. These are the twenty-seven nakshatras like Kritika. But Chandrama had particular love for Rohini, so he got tuberculosis and hence could not produce a child. Names of Kashyapa's thirteen wives are, are Aditi, Diti, Dhanu, Kakshta, Hariha, Suraha, Ilha, Muni, Krodha, Varsha, Tamra, Surabhi, Sarama, and Tumi. These are the mothers of the whole world. All the gods, demons, animals, jains were born to them. Insult of Brihaspati by the gods. Sukadeva says, O Parikshit, Indra had become very haughty by the luxuries he received as the king of the gods. One day, Devaraj Indra was sitting on his throne along with his queen Sachi. His court was full of courtiers, forty-nine Marudganas, eight Vasus, eleven Rudras, Adityas, Ribhagunas, Vishwadeva, Sandhyaganas, and both Ashwini Kumaras were present in the court. Groups of Siddhas, Charushas, Gandharvas, Vidyadharas, Apsaras, Kinnaras, Nagas were singing in his praise and programs of dance and music was on. Acharya Brihaspati, the reverend teacher of the gods, arrived there. But despite having seen him, Indra did not show any respect for Brihaspati. Indra Indignant Brihaspati, he at once deserted Devaloka. Without, when Acharya Brihaspati had gone, Indra realized his mistake. He at once launched an extensive search for Guru Brihaspati, but no one could locate Brihaspati. Feeling of insecurity in the absence of Guru strongly agitated the gods. On the other hand, when the demons came to know about Brihaspati is missing, they began to intimidate the gods. By the permission of their teacher, Shukracharya, the demons launched an attack on the Devaloka, feeling sad by the pitiable state of the gods. Indra went to the refuge of the Brahma, who told the gods that they were suffering because of their wrong policies and disregarding their learned guru. Brahma also told the gods that the demons had strengthened their position because of their loyalty to their teacher, Shukracharya. Brahma advised the gods to request Vishwarupa, the son of the sage Trashwa, to become their teacher. He is a sound scholar of Vedas, great ascetics and abstentious person. Serving him, Brahma said, you will be free from all the crises. Following Brahma's advice, the gods made Vishwarupa their teacher by request. Ascetic Vishwarupa used his Vaishnava Vidya 
to annihilate the wealth and power of the demons and endowed Indra with those powers. Vishwarupa also preached Indra about the infallible Vaishnavi Vidyam. Thus securing himself under the shield of this knowledge, Indra defeated all the demonic forces. Preaching of Narayana Kavacha to Indra by Vishwarupa. The king Parikshit asked, O Lord, kindly relate to me the knowledge, Vaishnavi Vidya, by the power of which Devaraj Indra easily defeated the demons. Sukadeva says, Parikshit. Now I am telling you about the knowledge that was once taught to Indra by Vishwarupa. So listen to it carefully with concentration. Whenever you feel yourself haunted with fears, you must guard you your body with this Narayana Kavacha. But therefore, and before that is, it is necessary to purify oneself by bath, meditation, libations, pranayama, and eight-lettered and twelve-lettered mantras of God. The hymnal Kavacha must be then recited facing north while reflecting on the divine appearances of God. May the God who rides Guru, Garuda and holds conch, wheel, maze, and lotus protect me from all sides. May all the incarnations of God protect me from all the lust, affection, and desires, and in all the circumstances. Thus may I be protected in water by Matsyavatara, on land by Vamanatara, in sky by Trivikrama, from Kam Kamapida by Shanakadit, from Kupatya, by Dhanavantri, from ignorance, from Veda Vyasa, from the hells of Kacha Avatara, in the war by Narsim Avatara, in the way by Varaha, on the top of the hills by Parshurama, during exile by Lord Rama, along with Lakshmanaji, from Maramohan Abhichar by Lord Narayana from ego by Nara, from obstacles by Dattatreya, from the bondage of actions by Kapila, from disregarding the god by Hygriva Mutri, from the crimes of by Narada, from the impostors by Buddha, and from the falls of Kali Kal, may I be protected by Kalki Dev. May I be protected in the morning with the maze by Keshav, with the flute by Govind, in the day by Narayana Shakti, before the noon, and may I be protected with Sudarshan Chakra by Lord Vishnu in the noon time. May the all-knowing omnipotent Lord protect me in every circumstances. May the name, appearance, vehicle, weapons, and all the services of Sri Hari protect my mind, intellect, organs, and life from all the calamities. This Narayana Kavacha saves one from all kind of calamities and fears. Killing of Vishwarupa and making Vajra with the Dhichi bones. Vishwarupa became the second Acharya teacher of the gods. He also saw over indulgence of Indra in luscious objects. Vishwarupa's mother belonged to demon clan, so he had some inclination for the demons also. Stealthily, he supplied parts of the offerings of the oblation to the demons. Very soon, Indra too came to learn that their teacher, Vishwarupa, was stealthily nurturing their enemies, the demons. So indignantly, Indra served the head of Vishwarupa, and to get rid of the sin of Brahmahatya, Indra distributed his sin among the land, water, tree, and woman, folk, and himself escaped the sin. To take revenge of his son's murder, sage Twasta organized a yajna with the purpose of having a son who could kill Indra. The yajna finished successfully and as soon as the offerings ended, a formidable demon appeared from the altar. The demon was named Vritasur. Very soon Vritasur defeated Indra and other gods and conquered all the three worlds. Terrorized by his power and gallantry, the gods ran into the refuge of Lord Narayana. Pleased with their faith and prayers, Lord Narayana advised them to please the great sage Dhadichi and ask for his bones to be built a Vajra. From that Vajra, Vritasur could be killed, God assured them. 
Thus all the gods headed by Indra reached the hermitage of sage Dadichi. There they very humbly and respectfully begged for his bone. For the benefit of the world, sage Dadichi gladly accepted to donate his bone. With those bones, Vishwakarma built a massive Vajra which had thousand edges. Thus, by the power of the Lord and acquiring a divine Vajra, Indra felt extremely strong. He at once launched an attack on the demons' armies and drew them away from the battlefield, killing off Vritasura by Indra. Sri Shukadeva says, O Parikshit, from the gallantry of the gods, the demon army began to flood. Seeing his army running away in panic, Vritasur got infuriated. Charging ahead, he stopped the gods' army from advancing. He roared loudly. Many of the gods fainted from the frightening thunder of the roar. Advancing Vritasur routed the fallen fighters. Even the earth began to shake because of his momentum. Devraj Indra could not bear it. He made a powerful blow on Vritasura with his mace. Vritasura held his maze in the way and hit Airavat, Indra's elephant, with it. Feeling the pain of the blow, Airavat moved back. Then Vritasura scolded Indra, who had killed Vishwarupa, the brother of Vritasura. O oh Indra, you have killed my brother Vishwarupa without any reason. Now I will go you, you with my powerful trident. Or you may behead me for your vaj- with your Vajra. Your Vajra has the power of the sage Dadichi and the glory of Sri Hari. But Indra, with your Vajra, I will get rid of the bondages of my body and get salvation at the feet of Lord Vishnu. So kill me with your Vajra. Thus even in the battlefield, Vritasura experienced direct existence of God. He prayed God, O Lord, May my mind reflect constantly on your auspicious virtues. May my voice always recite your virtues. May my body always be in your service. I don't want salvation without serving you. My mind is withering of your side. Shukadeva says, Thus, O Parikshit, Vritasura had wished to leave his body in the battlefield and get the God. He did not want to enjoy the luxuries of the heaven defeating Indra. Calling out these words, Vritasura hit Indra with trident. But Indra cut that hand of Vritasura, which was holding the trident, by his Vajra. Losing his one hand, Vritasura was very outrageous and hit Indra's chin and Airavad's forehead with his elbow. Because of the blow, Indra dropped his Vajra, which fell near Vritasura's feet. Indra was now feeling too ashamed to pick up the Vajra. Vritasura said, O Indra, pick up the Vajra and kill your enemy. It is not the time to be gloomy. Indra showed his respect to Vritasura for his truthfulness and deceitful words and said, O great demon, you are really great. Your patience, determination and devotion for God are really remarkable. You have surmounted the illusion of God that confuses Ordinary ones, you are a great man born in demon family. Vritasura again raised his V to hit, but Indra cut his second hand. Now having lost both his hands, Vritasura shook the earth with his heavy steps and swallowed Indra along with his elephant. Everyone was beginning to feel sorry for Indra, but because of Narayana Kavacha, Indra remained unhurt even in the belly of Vritasura. Thereafter, Indra lacerated the demon's belly and came out. Then he cut Vritasura's head also. At that moment, soul of Vritasura annihilated in the Supreme Being. All the gods then greeted Indra for his victory. Vritasura was a religious king, Chitraketu, in his previous birth. Because of the grace of Narada and Angira, he had received a detachment and supreme devotion and began to roam everywhere as a Siddha Purusha, one who achieves perfection. Once he was travelling on the aircraft gifted to him by the god, he saw the Artha Narishwa appearance of Lord Shiva and said something in derogation, indignant of his dis- 
courtesy Mata Parvati calls Chitraketu to take birth in a demon clan. Because of that curse, Chitraketu appeared as demon. But even in demon incarnation, his devotion for the Lord's feet persisted as before.